Today we are learning about and emulating the artist Minnie Small. She's one of the first people that I ever discovered on YouTube making art videos and I love her style. She was the clean girl aesthetic before I even knew the clean girl aesthetic existed. I don't even know if that's what she's going for but it's very minimalistic even her the way she presents herself is just very like simple and lovely and so I tried to honor her with my look today sorry for the roosters <laughs> but you know it's what it is anyway I tried to honor her with my rooster and <laughs> that's not spending way too much time on this now she has that clean girl look most days I'm just going for the shower girl look but I'm so I did shower. <laughs> I probably have on too much makeup for a clean girl look. I'm a mom and I'm tired and I need extra concealer into my eyes, okay. Um, so enough of the crazy talk about me. Let's talk about Minnie. She makes these beautifully shot and edited videos of not only making art, but how she makes her art. She does a studio vlog. She covers, you know, her organization. The way that I actually found her, she did a 30 ways to fill a sketchbook series and i absolutely fell in love and it was like the kind of thing where when you find it you're so excited it like gives you the tinglies to watch the next episode and you're just like oh i'm so excited because <laughs> i was so inspired she is very consistent in her style and it's been cool to see her grow through the years but also still have the very um consistent hand of many small so i love her work i love her style and today we're going to take a look at it i am going to do a few pieces and try to learn something let's go minnie is a uk-based self-taught artist and she's done an incredible job growing her artistic style business and brand from the ground up everything she does is so unique to her and she does a lot <laughs> as an artist she has insane small muscle control which helps her create her tiny masterpieces like the tiny houses with the tiny landscapes and she works in this beautiful in-between of precision and fluid movement which is no easy feat her pieces often look to me like they are floating or they're underwater, which gives them this ethereal feeling that I just adore. I really love the way she draws people. She does some exaggeration of key features, which if you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know I love. Um, but her lines are so fluid and it makes them feel so soft and alive. Not only is her work just gorgeous, but her videos are genuinely beautiful as well. She really puts a lot of time and effort into filming in the best light and gather calming and visually consistent shots. Her voiceovers are honestly so relaxing. She's a great person to actively learn from or passively listen to while you work. As I said, I discovered Minnie's channel a few years back when she put out her series of videos on 30 ways to fill a sketchbook. I bet a lot of people found her channel back then. The intro still gets me so fired up to get started, so let's watch it together and then get started. About 20 minutes into my sketching, a hawk swooped on my chickens right outside my window while I was recording. While I did record myself drawing and talking through it in real time, when I went back to edit, I realized it was really boring and I get really distracted while I'm drawing, surprise. So I'm just going to speed through it instead and do a voiceover because we've actually got a lot of ground to cover today. Oh no, I'm spilling my water, no. Dang, this has been a day for a video. <laughs> I am going to go in. You definitely wanna, <sighs> I was just about to say, you definitely wanna make sure that your ink is dry before you erase um but i am the way i am now let's give it some time now let's just give this poor girl a break 
and we will come back to her later. The first piece I jumped into was really just to explore making lines like Minnie and hopefully exaggerating a few features, which I mostly just did with her neck. Um, but I do feel like I fell back into things that are already kind of my personal style with this. And it didn't really push the boundaries enough of exploring her style versus mine. I moved on instead to drawing a spread of quick portraits just to loosen up and get into it with a few different mediums that I've seen her used. I combined graphite and ink. I used my brush pen a lot. I used a fine tip pen for some. I used colored pencils and watercolor. I tried to mess around with layering and, and just trying out different ways to shade. I also went on Pinterest and tried to choose portraits of really interesting looking people. I will say, if nothing else, this exercise certainly reminded me how out of practice I am with doing fine line work with my brush pen. My lines were all over the place and I smudged the ink multiple times because I forgot that it actually has a drying time. Um, oh, and there is, you know, this monstrosity. As I said, however, Minnie has a good handful of instructional videos. So when I couldn't quite put my finger on what I was missing style wise, I just went back and watched her video on how she draws faces, which I will link. It was really helpful for me. And the next couple of faces were much closer to what I wanted. First, I watched the video and then tried to draw, but I still didn't like what I was getting. So I tried it again, but this time I kept the video playing for reference as I drew. And I think that these portraits turned out a lot better. I think originally my problem was that I have seen her work for so many years that I just kind of counted on my mind's eye to <laughs> break it down. And for whatever reason, I didn't like do an in-depth review of how she does things. I know I've said it before, I will say it again. I will probably say it multiple times in this video, but I cannot express how in awe I am of Minnie's small muscle control. Brush pens, are just so hard on my hands, but she somehow makes these beautiful, delicate lines and she really plays with her line weight and she doesn't get too caught up in like perfection. It can be a very wobbly line or whatever, but it's got this, this variation in line weight that, like I said, just makes her, her subjects feel so alive. So I tried to imitate how she focuses on the bold shadows instead of making every single line, but I will say that was a challenge. It's hard to break your habits. You know, I got a little bit closer to what I was aiming for and I cut these ladies out of another sketchbook and just glued them onto the page that I disliked. Honestly, still kind of hate that page. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm just being dramatic, but you know, it is what it is. Finally, I did do a self portrait just to stick with the tradition in these videos, but I knew I wasn't going to stop at how she draws people. So I thought I would just throw that in while I was doing the portraits. And it was kind of fun to explore exaggerating my own features in her specific way. Next, we have ink drawings of an array of objects. I originally meant to grab a few of my favorite items from my kitchen, so I would have some art to hang in there but I guess that I just forgot because I ended up just pulling random odds and ends from around my studio. I have an old moonbeam clock, a ceramic creamer, which holds some pens, a little gold teapot for watering my plants, a bronze duck bookend, a succulent, and a small stained glass window. It was a fun and straightforward exercise, but I still feel like I'm missing the disparity of line weight that her ink drawings have, and that makes them feel like they're moving. I think I'll try again in the future and probably follow through with my kitchen art plan. All right, here we are with the finished um, objects piece. I like how it turned out. What do you guys think? My hand is absolutely killing me. This is part of why I don't do Inktober anymore, actually. Something I mentioned previously that Minnie draws a lot is houses. As you saw, she made them her subject one year for Inktober, but I've seen her do quite a lot of them over the years. Whether she's just inking them or doing watercolor, it's just a great way for her to show off her line control and take these homes and turn them into very dreamlike places. I remember her saying in a video a while back that she'll actually go on Google Earth to find interesting homes to draw. So while the first one I drew was actually an Airbnb that I stayed at once, the second one was just a little cottage that I found by going on Google Earth and 
basically just going around Scotland and, you know, seeing what I could find. It was harder than I thought it would be. I would like to review her video and see like what her strategy is for finding these places, but it was a really fun detour. So I enjoyed that. Finally, we have Minnie and her plants. She does gorgeous paintings and drawings of florals, fruit, and foliage. And it all fits so well into that underwater kind of style she's got going on. It's interesting to me how her lines and edges become somewhat geometric when drawing the very curvy and natural things. So I went for that while I was sketching the philodendron vine, a pomegranate, and then a flower. And for the pomegranate and the flower, I actually didn't use a reference. Um, so I was just kind of making them up. And I actually think that helped me loosen up a little bit more. When I felt like that went well, I decided to go ahead and try my hand at painting. But I will say forms are one thing, color is a totally different thing. And mine and Minnie's painting techniques are very different. From my view, it looks like Minnie is a very patient artist. I can't say the same thing about myself. So while it seems like she um, patiently mixes her colors and places them very intentionally, I think I tend to more like shoot from the hip and just, I like to build up layers, um, which, you know, one layer may look rough and blunt and all of that kind of stuff, but then the next layer will be a little more refined and the next layer will be a little more refined until I achieve the look I'm going for. And that's fine when you're working with acrylic paint, something that will dry completely between layers, but will not be reactivated with water. But when you are working with water activated gouache, this is not actually the best strategy. You've got to be more intentional on the first put down of color. I ran into a couple of hiccups because of that mainly, that I was working with gouache and I love gouache. I love working with it, um, but I'm still learning a lot about it. So I will leave it at that for right now. I could stand to slow down a bit <laughs> and pay attention to the things that I might be missing. After getting the main florals and the background painted, I was feeling like I was kind of hitting a wall and it was late, so I just went to bed. But the next day when I came back in and looked at it, it just felt very weird and blue <laughs> and flat. So I watched another video of hers painting florals and then I went back and I worked on my colors also adding all the little touches that make a painting look like a mini small, you know, all of her specks of white and, you know, little delicate additions. And I really like it a lot better now. What do you guys think? It's very cold in the studio today. So I've got myself some bone broth hot chocolate. Based on my plan, I should be done. I should be more than done. And really, if I keep going, this video is gonna be three hours long. Maybe it's just because I decided to do this project in a sketchbook, the whole thing, instead of, you know, a couple of runs in a sketchbook and then a final piece. But I feel like I really need to complete my sketchbook spreads. So that's what I'm going to do, hopefully before the baby wakes up. If I don't get the chance before my kid wakes up to tell you, go check out Minnie Small's page. It's just Minnie Small on YouTube, or her website is semiskimmedmin.com. And also, don't forget to pick up her book, The 30 Day Sketchbook Project. It is full of really inspiring, um, inspiring prompts and exercises. And if you're like me and you love getting handed an assignment, um, this is the book for you. <laughs> it's a very, very relaxed way to kind of get back in the groove of making or overcome the fear of the blank page. Wherever you are in your art journey, I think this is a, a good read. I did go back and I added a few little studies of Minnie's work to the sketchbook spreads. And I added a little poetry as well. I don't think I'm quite done working on these spreads for good, but I definitely am for now. I know it may not seem like it, but this has actually been one of my most chaotic videos to plan and execute just because I had a plan and then I kept adding to it as I thought of more and more things I wanted to try in her style. If I did it all, this would be a three hour video. So for now, thank you for hanging with me. I hope you guys had fun. I certainly did. I'll see you next time.
go outside and get some fresh air because I'm not going to because it's cold. <laughs>